By the mid-70s, Canadian music is rocking, from Fredericton to Fort St. John. By decades end, an exciting new wave of Canadian music is filling concert halls and flooding the charts. Punk music rises up like a noisy teenager, denouncing mainstream rock as pompous, complacent, and self-satisfied. Most punks are, in fact, teenagers themselves, a defiant bunch who are bored with the status quo. Canada produces some of the world's most notorious punk bands, including Vancouver's DOA and Toronto's Vile Tones, led by dynamic frontmen Joey Shithead Keithley and Stephen Nazi Dog Lecky. The late 70s were populated with what I would call a democratization of music, led by the punk rockers, who came on stage with uh, three chords, a lot of heart, and energy like you wouldn't believe. It brought back music to anybody. The idea was just pick up a guitar, get your mother's station wagon, and go somewhere and play, and, and not to have expectations, not to care if the record company likes you or doesn't like you, or, or even to care if there's anybody in the audience. It didn't matter, just play. Getting played on the radio was a whole nother matter. There were not a lot of stations ready to play punk. Rock at that point, 77, 78, was really dead. And so when punk rock came along, I thought like, wow, this is alive. All of a sudden, all these bands happen at once. Bands like the Diodes and Teenage Head and Vile Tones, just getting up and doing it themselves, making it up and making their own posters. And it was sort of the reclaiming of rock and roll by the youth culture. I was aware of bands like DOA, and the, sub and the subhumans. Um, I tended to like more of the, the artists that were more like the pointed sticks, which were more of a new wave pop philosophy. Vancouver's pointed sticks are in the vanguard of the Canadian new wave, with a high energy melodic sound that gets the band signed to England's Stiff Records, home of Elvis Costello. Yeah, the Pointed Sticks were another Vancouver band that would come to Edmonton and they let us open. And they had a, you know, an album out that Bob Rock had produced. I think we might have been one of the first things that he ever actually got to produce. The Pointed Sticks were a great inspiration. They were punks and lots of attitude, lots of attitude. And they played great music. Again, they were taking the punk rock attitude of you can get out and do it yourself, but they were playing pop music. The Pointed Sticks were the best band that ever played in Vancouver. We were definitely going for a cross between the Buzzcocks, the Ramones, uh, the Detroit sound, all that kind of thing. And we were really trying to marry it with something more melodic. The Dish Rags were the first punks on stage in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Dish Rags, seminal on the whole punk rock scene because those girls were 14, 15 when they started that band. We got to open for The Clash and that was a real thrill. Their first North American date and um, we played with them on three different occasions. The Vile Tones debuted at the Colonial Underground, and the Vile Tones had made such a stink and such a um, brouhaha that everybody in the scene was at this original gig. So I go down there, and it was fantastic. All these punk fans, I mean, the Vile Tones, I used to love going to see the Vile Tones. Give me this, give me this, give me this. Stephen Lecky is a really dynamic, charismatic individual. You know, I mean, we're covered by Nirvana, um, Guns N' Roses, Henry Rollins, Bad Brains. That's pretty good. And especially considering we were never on a major label or anything. There was the Vile Tones, there was the Demix. Those were the really superior bands. The most amazing band back there was the Demix, uh, with Keith Whitaker uh, singing. He he was phenomenal. I mean, he was really, really talented and truly angry. You don't get any better rock and roll than the Demix doing 
I want to go to New York City Cause they tell me it's the place to be I want to go to New York City I just know that it's a place for me Yeah Joe Keithley was in the band The Skulls back in 77 and he moved back in the spring of 78 and he started this new band, DOA. I was watching TV one night and this uh, crazy DJ uh, was having this anti-disco rally and, and I saw these people, they had stuff like death before disco and disco sucks and I thought, well, there was a great idea for a song. Yeah, let's watch her, look at her, look at her, look at her, look at her, they were a, a major source of inspiration for all of us, I think, in, in the scene. The dials really were nothing like I, I had ever seen before, you know. They, they were kind of really smart about what they were doing, but it was a very primitive sort of thing, you know, like the guitar player and the bass player had homemade t-shirts. The diodes, you know, the best song they ever wrote was I'm Tired of Waking Up Tired, and, and immediately, oh God, you'd have this picture of yourself. I'm tired of waking up tired, waking up tired, yeah, I'm waking up tired. I'm tired of waking up tired, waking up tired, yeah, I'm waking up tired. Much down to kill, let's give really caught on with us uh, very early on. It, it was very uh, popular uh, performances, and it became kind of an anthem for that era. And actually, there's uh, an album on vinyl of us live at the Alma Combo that has the original arrangement of Tired of Waking Up Tired on That's it as right. we performed it. I'm tired of waking up tired. One of these gigs that I was at, I turned around and, and um, there's a whole gang of people behind me that I was eavesdropping and they seemed to know their music, you know, they were referencing everything. And it was the Teenage Head Gang who had come in from uh, Hamilton to check out this new scene that was happening. Their first album, it's a perfect album. You can put it on any time and everyone will love it and it always puts you in a good mood. My first concert was at the Whitby Civic Auditorium, that was Teenage Head. Teenage Head I loved because they were a real rock band. You, you watched them live, you wanted to dance. Definitely got a lot of music going in Hamilton, whether it was punk or not. Venom had a million dollar voice. He really was the Iggy Pop. He really, he did really combine all those elements of a front man. And he had the ability to command a room. The very first show that indicated to me that there was something going on is when we, we went down to play New York at CBGB's with Stephen Leckie from the Vile Tones got spectacular review and variety, and we killed them, man. I mean, I felt so proud of Teenage Head because they, man, they clicked. They really had a sound, and there wasn't anyone in Manhattan I knew that could touch them.